Hey, what's up everyone? This is Patrick from Punk Torah coming to you from our office at Hub Atlanta. And this video is about prayer melodies. So you know how the whole thing works. You haven't been to synagogue in a while, maybe ever. And uh, you go in and you grab your siddur and you sit down and then all of a sudden the service starts and people are singing. And they all seem to know the song and you don't know. How do they know what the melody is if they just have a book? Okay. Well, that's where the whole idea of Jewish melodies comes from. So you have these things called trope marks, and they're these kind of squiggly looking lines. Uh, they look like uh, brackets. Uh, they look like L shapes. Uh, sometimes they look like these little like wishbone looking things, or they have little squiggle marks that are on top. Anyway, these are cantillation symbols or trope symbols. And what they do is they act as the punctuation marks in um, liturgy and in the Torah and in the Haftarah, so that they can be chanted. So in Hebrew, you don't, in, in the uh, traditional Hebrew um, of the uh, prayer book and of uh, our sacred literature, you don't have um, periods and exclamation points and commas, things like that. So you don't know how to put the right emphasis on the right syllable, if you will, to borrow a line from Mike Myers. Um, so that's what trope marks do. They act as the little emphasis points. So there's different kinds of melodies at different times for basically the same liturgy. So um, Jewish prayer melodies are sort of like Mexican food. Like, you know, you go to like these crummy American Mexican restaurants and, you know, it's, well, what's in a tostada? Well, it's beans and cheese and lettuce. Okay, well, what's on a taco? Beans and cheese and lettuce and meat. Okay, well, what are fajitas? Well, it's meat and then you get it with a, you know, taco shell, right? It's like all the same stuff. Well, that's the same thing with Jewish prayer melodies. It's the same stuff. It's, you know, Shema and Vyahavta and Lechun Aranana and all of these uh, psalms and pieces of poetry, and they just have different kinds of music depending on the time. So here's a, a basic primer for how this works. If it is a happy holiday, so if it's a festive holiday, if it's not something where you're mourning, you will sing a melody that's what's called the major key. So if you're looking at a keyboard or you're looking at um, a piano, that's the white keys. So it's, you know, da 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 or um, da 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 Okay, so those are two different melodies, and it's all on the white keys. Uh, if you are at a holiday that is mournful, so Tisha B'Av, um, if you're going to a service for Yom HaShoah, uh, things of that nature, different kinds of fast days, um, the liturgy and the songs that are going to be sung are going to be in the black keys. That's actually called the uh, minor scale. And um, that's kind of what goth music is actually written to. It's all the, the minor sounds. So it's going to be uh, a lot darker. Uh, it's going to be oh, like that kind of lower, um, just sort of more depressing, a little bit more atonal um, sounding. Now, there's a difference in prayer melodies between the Ashkenazim and the Sephardic. So Ashkenaz, which is Eastern European, and primarily where most non-Orthodox American synagogues get their prayer melodies from because uh, of just the immigration that has happened to the United States of uh, primarily German Jews, uh, we use a lot of Ashkenazi melodies. Uh, if you are talking about North Africa, Spain, uh, people who are from the Near East, they use a lot of these Sephardic melodies. So to give you an example of uh, an Ashkenaz melody, you'll have something like uh, the daily Shema. So you'll have Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Okay, uh, so that would be like an Ashkenaz or uh, for Shabbat it would be Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Or uh, in an uh, Orthodox setting, it, it would be uh, Shema Yisrael El, uh, uh, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Okay, in a um, Sephardic setting, and I'm not even going to really try to do the Sephardi melodies, it'll be uh, Shema Yisrael, Adonai 
Okay, so you'll have this stretching out of one word. Um, Ashkenaz melodies tend to be a little more, bit more sing-songy, so So it all kind of like swims together. Uh, Sephardi communities, it tends to either run very, very fast and very wordy, or you'll, you'll have lots of words in a row, and then all of a sudden there will be a stop, there will be a pause, and there will be a very, very long stretching out of one word, um, hitting lots and lots of notes on that one word. Now, I don't really know Sephardic melodies. I've obviously heard them. I've gone to Sephardic synagogues. Um, I'm not as uh, trained in them as I am uh, the Ashkenaz melodies, simply because that's more normative uh, for the part of the world that I live in. But I would encourage you to go to the Sephardic synagogues if you're Ashkenaz, or vice versa, because you can learn different types of music, um, and it's just an interesting cultural experience. It's nice to see how different people do Judaism based on uh, where, what part of the world they're from. Um, all of these melodies are inherited from the countries that Jews lived in. We you know, had different kinds of instruments, there were different types of folk singing, and uh, we took those uh, ideas from our neighbors and blended them uh, into our tradition. So it's a really, really beautiful thing. Now, in addition to that, a lot of music that you hear, most conservative and reformed synagogues, is going to be folk music that's either new, that's from Israel, or you're going to hear uh, Jewish folk songs that are as recent as the 1960s. Uh, there's been a resurgence in the Karlebach service, uh, so um, you have Shlomo Karlebach of blessed memory, he was an Orthodox rabbi who really uh, brought uh, a lot of ruach, a lot of spirit to Jewish music. He was a guitar player. Um, his daughter, Neshama Karlebach, who I had the pleasure of uh, meeting and uh, spending some time at a conference with uh, a few years back, has continued that tradition. So occasionally you'll hear about something called a Karlebach service. So the Karlebach service will be, you know, a typical Shabbat service only using Karlebach's melodies. Um, so I would highly recommend, you know, you can download his music off iTunes. There's plenty of videos uh, if you want to learn some of his melodies. And then the newer uh, Israeli songs, so Odiavo Shalom Aleinu um, being, uh, you know, the most common. Am Yisrael Chai, uh, there's lots of different kinds of songs, and there's tons of videos out there, including uh, here on Punk Torah's YouTube channel of those. So anyway, to recap, Ashkenazic melodies are either very sing-songy in the major or the minor. Sephardic melodies tend to be more of what we think of with uh, sort of uh, North African and uh, Spanish. Very, very wordy and then drawing out on just one word uh, with lots of uh, melodic changes in that one word. And you should really check out the diversity of Jewish music. Uh, you should try out a lot of different things. And lastly, if you want to learn uh, more of the musical aspects of Judaism, I highly recommend uh, Pocket Trope, which is an iPhone app. There's also Pocket Torah. They're free. Um, they were uh, funded by the Jewish New Media Innovation Fund, which funded uh, our project, the God Project, uh, made by two really terrific guys. Uh, and you can actually click on each word and you can hear the melody for that word. So if you want to learn how to chant a line of Torah for an Aliyah or something like that, you don't have to learn all the cantillation marks. Um, if you're studying for a bar mitzvah, again, you don't have to learn all the cantillation marks. You can just memorize whatever it is you have to sing in the same way that you would memorize any other song. So, hope that helps. If you have any questions, email address is down below. Hope to check out Punk Torah. And if this video has been helpful to you, please consider donating. The donation button is right over there. <laughs>